today we're going to be working on the Witch King of Angmar armor. We're going to be constructing the bracers, wrist guards, and elbow guard. And we've got lots of 3D modeling to do. We're going to work in Fusion 360 and Mesh Mixer to get the solid shape and then add in organic details. We're going to get those 3D printed here, all ready to be sanded and filled. So let's get started with the modeling. First, we need to sketch out a profile for the bracer. We're going to revolve that around and then use the shell tool to get a good thickness, which in this case is going to be about 2.4, should be pretty good. We need to cut out a portion of the inner side of the bracer, so we're going to sketch out another cutting shape here, and then just mirror right over and subtract that from the overall bracer. Now, I don't want this to be just a cutout and have to do a separate plate to fill it in. We're actually going to do a recess here that looks like it's two separate plates. So we need a second copy of the body of the bracer and then we're going to cut out a little bit more of this one. So we need to sketch out the part that would allow the arm to bend and then we're going to trim away most of this second bracer piece so that it doesn't add extra bulk to the inside. We're going to subtract out that piece that allows the arm to bend and then also blend it into the overall body of the bracer by rounding out those internal edges. We need to take that entire piece and scoot it back just a little bit, maybe about two millimeters or so, but we're going to keep the thickness of that just to make sure we don't have any ridiculously thin walls that aren't going to print well. Blend that all in together and now we've got one simple piece, fewer pieces to mess with when attaching it to this framework, and it still has the look of the reference photos. Now that we have the basic shape for the bracer, we can move on over to Mesh Mixer and sculpt in some of those organic details. I'm going to keep referencing back to movie stills and whatnot. And we're going to sketch out this kind of leaf vein type pattern that's on that inside portion of the recess. So I'm using a brush tool and I've got the symmetry setting turned on so that I can just sketch it all freehand and see what it looks like on both sides at the same time. This inner portion is symmetrical along an axis. However, the rest of the bracer is not going to be symmetrical, so we will need to turn that off in just a little bit. With the brushes, I like to kind of get the general shape set up with the central line and then the different curved pieces before getting too detailed on refining it. So we're just going to freehand sketch these little arches and you know there's a lot of undo and redo and stuff to get the correct shape here. With a little bit of trial and error though, you can get some pretty nice shapes sculpted on here. So I think that's looking pretty good, referencing back to the movie still. So I'm ready to go ahead and refine that a little bit. I want to make the ridges a little bit deeper to make sure that they register well when they're 3D printed. And then also just clean them up a little bit. Now it doesn't really need to be perfectly smooth because this is going to be sanded after it's printed anyways, so it's kind of just a waste of time to get it really perfect, unless this was a model that you're going to be using in its digital format, in which case, of course, you would want it to look nice and neat there. But for now, we just need to make sure that the structure is there and that it's smooth enough to print out well. Also, you want to keep an eye on your meshes with this. Every so often I turn on the wireframe and then just remove any excess detail that really does nothing to make the model better. It just kind of bogs it down and might slow it down and risk crashing and whatnot later on. So I'm just taking out those extra meshes and leaving the detail in the points where it matters along those uh, raised areas. I have kept the inner piece and the outer bracer separate. It's easier to work on each one separately than to have them joined into one mesh because if they are together then you kind of accidentally modify one when you're really just trying to make changes to you know just the outside or just the inside. And since they are supposed to look like separate pieces it's easier just to keep them as separate parts that can be turned on and off and worked on separately but then you can also have it turned on to make sure that the parts look good together within your model. For the outer bracer, I did have to add in some additional uh, triangulations there in order to have enough mesh to work with to do these kind of fine raised details. So I added in a pretty good amount there and then kind of had to go back a little bit and take out some of that mesh, had a little bit too much. So once I got a nice even mesh set up on this, now I can go in and add in those raised details that are going to reference back to the types of details that I did in the pauldrons in foam, but we're going to be sketching this now using a mouse, so it's a little bit different, but the overall feel is going to be the same in the end. There's a branching structure that comes from the inside of the wrist and then goes out towards the elbow when you look at the reference movie version. 
So I'm starting with those that I for sure know about where they need to go. And then I'm just gonna fill in the details in a way that looks good with the piece and that makes sense with how everything else is working. We're just gonna get them lightly sketched in and go ahead and smooth them out later on and make them a little bit deeper to make sure they print well. As I go, I'm doing just enough smoothing to help me see exactly what it looks like. So I know if I'm happy with that portion before moving on, then we'll get a little more detailed with the smoothing once all of the vein pieces are sketched into the model. I'm gonna check my mesh now and take out any messy, unnecessary details there. And I'm happy with the placement now, so I'm using the smooth tools to blend the ridges in with the body of the bracer. And then also go back in with a slightly smaller brush to raise up the centers of each ridge to make sure that they're deep enough to register properly when printing. And some of them are more raised than others, just that kind of organic variation that it appears to have in the movie. At the top and bottom, I've let the model get just a little bit uneven there because it actually fits with the overall design of the pieces. They're not meant to be like really clean, straight edges. So there's not too much of a concern there with keeping that super precise. I'm actually doing a little bit of a, an arch between some of those veins, kind of like a leafy type pattern that it appears to be to me in the reference images. Then finally, we need to make sure that the separate piece, that's that inset piece, does line up with the final outcome for the outer piece. So now that the outer piece is done, I'm just kind of reducing some of those edges that got a little bit exposed in the sculpting process. And that bracer is now ready for printing. So I've exported it all as one piece. I'm gonna try this at 0.25 resolution and I've got my wall thicknesses set at two perimeters each. So it's gonna be in total about that 2.4 millimeters that I'm going for. And then I'm not doing any infill. It's just not really necessary for this. There's not gonna be much space there anyways. It's gonna be plenty strong without adding that little bit of extra infill. And it will keep the printer from creating so much motion as it's printing. With a tall print like this, stability is a concern. So with it doing primarily just perimeters, that's gonna ensure that it stays stable and you don't get too much layer shifting there going on. I've also got, well, in this case, I started out with a raft, but ended up switching to a brim for the second one. Uh, it just didn't really matter uh, if I had to cut off just a little bit of that bottom to get enough of a flat surface to use the brim. And the brim is a little bit cleaner than the raft uh, for cleaning up afterwards. And that sticks well to the print bite. It does self-release if you just leave it for a little while, just pops right off. And I experimented, since I had two to do, I did one with some support material and one without. Didn't really matter either way, they both had their own issues. So I probably would just do support material so that I don't have quite as much of a large issue as I did without the support material. But either one was fine in this case, it bridges pretty well. So this piece slips on here. Obviously there was a lot of sanding to do on this, sanding and filling, but this was printed at a really low resolution. This is at 0.25 in a uh, layer height and it really looks pretty decent. I was gonna have to sand it anyway, so it just seemed silly to spend you know, an extra 10 hours or whatever printing it at a higher resolution to still just have to go in and sand it. So this is gonna go on here, and the next piece that I needed is gonna be the wrist here. For the wrist, I'm gonna be working with the loft tool. So I've sketched a couple of profiles. One of them is a circle that's going to fit inside of the bracer piece so that that can overlap with the wrist guard, and then it's gonna go down to a slightly smaller, more oval type shape. It still has rounded edges, but it's flat on the top and bottom. I did add one extra profile into the mix to make the portion that's gonna go under the bracer kind of round down a little bit and close in towards the top, just to make it slide in nicely. And we just loft those pieces and add a little bit of a twist until it looks about right. And we're ready to switch over to Mesh Mixer again. Now there's this little thorn piece that comes off the side um, on the outside of each of these. So I used a mix of sculpting with the brush tools and smoothing tools. I also added in a primitive cone just to give it a little bit more of a geometric shape and then just blended that in with the brushed portions. Next I need to blend out those same ridges that interact with the bracer piece. So some of those lines are going to continue down onto the wrist piece. And then I'm just going to add in a little bit more there to fill it out and complete the pattern so that the wrist is a cohesive piece in and of itself and it goes with the bracer. I'm using the same technique of sketching everything in, getting the placement right, 
then smoothing out a little bit, building up the ridges a little more. Some of them are going to be a little taller than others for a little bit of variation in there. But overall, we want to just get something that's smooth enough to print, and then we'll refine it a little bit in the sanding stage. I'm still checking my mesh every now and then to get rid of any unnecessary detail in there. And then the lip towards the hand end of this wrist piece, it just looked a little bit chopped off. So I did kind of build it up a little bit with the brush tool, create a slightly more rounded effect that kind of flares out just a little bit and then turns back in in a nice rounded edge. It's not going to show too much. It's mostly going to be overlapped by the gauntlets, but it just created a slightly more finished looking piece. I used pretty much the same settings for the wrist piece as I did for the bracer, except I just had to change the temperature a little bit since I switched filaments. Doing a little bit of experimenting just to see what filament might work best for these types of pieces, see which one's going to be stronger and provide the appropriate amount of rigidity, also with regards to which one's easier to finish and which one overall gives you a cleaner print. This is the mirrored side. We're going to go ahead and pop this off. Print looks pretty good. It didn't release quite as well as the last one, but I think that's because I have the initial layer height set to 0.3. So it's really stuck on there a little bit too well, maybe. There we go. Okay. So it looks really nice in the 3DX Tech glass fiber fill. There are some very wide layers right here, but that's because I have the layer height set to 0.25 most likely. So I mean, I could set it to a more detailed print height, but since I'm going to be sanding it anyway, it just seems sort of silly for it to take longer to print when I've got to sand it either way. Some sanding and filler primer. So the bare metal set to pop that off, sand everything down. And uh, now it's time to go ahead and get those elbows finished up. I'm going to be overlapping two different sketches to create the elbow piece. I used the reference photo here to get the general shape for the different arched portions of the side profile view. And I also sketched out a top view just to get the curve right for this and the wall thickness. Now I'm going to subtract out the excess between the two so that we're left with the curved piece that also has all of the arches cut into it and that point. With Fusion, you can do some live updates on that sketch based on how it really looks in 3D versus that 2D picture. So I've got the basic idea there and I'm just kind of modifying those curves until it looks just about right. And then also making sure that my wall thickness makes sense and preparing everything for adding in those brushed on details in just a bit. The bottom part of this elbow piece, it does kind of angle in a little bit and has some cutouts. So I'm just going to create some subtraction tools here, get them positioned to where they look just about right on that model and then subtract those sections out. I'm more concerned about getting the structure in place than about the exact shape of the different edges because we're going to get that taken care of in Mesh Mixer. And I don't want those cuts to go all the way through. I don't want any holes in the model. So I'm just getting rid of the portion that's extra and then removing those chunks from the lower side. Now that the shape's good to go, it's time to go ahead and work on that mesh. Now I needed more triangulations for this than it initially had. So I went a slightly different route on this. I used the make solid tool and then just reduced those uh, triangles until it looked about right for sketching in the raised details. And once the mesh was good, pulled out those brush tools again and just started freehanding on both sides using that symmetry setting. And it's the same type of look as everything else with the armor, sort of a leaf vein type pattern. And you just got to kind of find the right positioning there to where it resembles the reference image, but also looks good on this exact version of it. For the top there, I want to make that curve in a little bit. So I'm using the move tool to push that mesh inwards just in that area. We'll get the edge nice and smooth and then go back in and add the final little arched veins there. And we also need to go ahead and work on those square cutouts that we made earlier because they don't look quite right with the rest of the model. We're going to just use a brush tool and a smooth tool, go back and forth a little bit until it looks about right, and blend that all in with the rest of the structures that we've already created. Make sure everything there is pretty nice and smooth and doesn't look squared off anymore. But you also have to be careful not to completely destroy those sharp edges. To give it that angle, I'm going to use the move tool again and just mush it in a little bit and then just ensure that everything is still smooth together. One more thing, I'm going to leave some of those original 
solid blocks only in areas where I haven't changed it too much just to make sure that I keep those nice straight edges in the areas where I do want a little more geometry but just subtract out any of the parts that overlap with the areas where we made some drastic changes like at the top where we pushed it all in to make that curve leave the geometric portions and that'll ensure we don't lose any of those pointed areas. Now I started out print, trying to print it all as one. That was this first test right here. And I just aborted this print because it wasn't looking good and there was gonna be a lot of unnecessary cleanup here when it's gonna in the end just be easier to print this as two pieces and then glue them together later. Now the very first one, this is a glass fiber filament from 3DX Tech and I was not happy with the results of this. I wasn't sure if it was just the filament or something wrong with the model or what. The main problem areas are here at the tips. These are supposed to go all the way up as you could see in the model, but here they really, really failed. Let me just show you a detail of that. Something was very wrong with the print as it was moving on. We've got a lot of extra material here and then not enough where it's supposed to be. The point here came out okay, but again, still it's really fragile. It's not solid at all. Like it should be, it should have uh, two perimeters on each wall. So I switched over to Tech G and encountered a similar problem here. I've already pulled off some of the little stragglers, but it still did the same weird thing where there's not enough material where there should be too much where there shouldn't be. So I was watching how the path worked uh, on, as it was printing. When it comes from this point, a lot of extra material was coming out in between and then not enough once it got here. So there was just such a small surface area on this point as it gets towards the top. It was just making it really messy and causing all these issues. So I did another version here where I added in just this extra piece, really just to clean the nozzle between uh, parts. So as it's going from here to the next part, it first makes a pit stop here, cleans off any extra, and then it's free to go over here and do a nice sharp edge. As you can see there, that's a significant improvement. And it wasn't the model that was the problem. I, of course, investigated that first to see if I had an error um, created maybe when I was doing the uh, sculpting here. But it really was just more of a hardware issue with how the printer was working. And this side's not quite perfect. It probably could have used one more nozzle cleaner between these two, but it's so close that this I can definitely just fix by melting it a little bit, adding a little extra material. So no big deal on that. So these are gonna have to be attached together with the bottom pieces and then we're gonna end up with this really cool elbow. This is going to fit like this over the bracer and the tolerances are good so that it can move a little bit but it's a fairly close fit so we're not adding extra bulk or anything looking out of proportion. The bottom part did print really nicely here so this didn't need any sort of support structure or anything. It came out just fine. Of course, gotta sand all of these new pieces, join together the elbows. The pauldrons and the plates are still waiting to be sanded and filled and whatnot and reinforced because they're just kind of coming apart just a little bit here. I've got to figure out all the way that the strapping is gonna work for attaching it to the Witch King's arm here. I'm probably going to end up trimming this and just attaching the bracer directly to the top and then leaving enough space for me to insert my arm to control the whole piece that way and still reach into the hand that's gonna be down here. So we're gonna be combining you know, foam and 3D printing and all sorts of things here to try to get this guy put together. And he's gonna be pretty dramatic. I still gotta do the helm too, which I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna be 3D printing or foam or what, so we'll get to that. As you can see on me, it's pretty much my entire arm, but that's gonna work I think well with the framework with this being a life-size, you know, seven plus foot tall character that's gonna fit on me. <laughs> My shoulder is going to become his elbow. The uh, wrist piece fits on here. This was sculpted for the lines here to somewhat line up with the pieces on the bracer and then just some extra ones in there just to give it a full detailed look. And this little guard here, which is supposed to go on that side. I'm actually wearing the left hand one on my right. Uh, so that's gonna fit in here like this. And of course, this is gonna go with the gauntlets, which are still waiting to be permanently attached and finished and all that. Uh, but essentially, this is kind of the look that we're gonna get. And it all has to be attached together properly. And there's the thumb too. <laughs> 
So I think overall the proportion is looking pretty good for how tall he's going to be. So that's kind of where we're at for now. There's lots of sanding and filling to do and it's going to look a lot more cohesive once there's a uniform finish applied since these are all different filaments and some experimentation going on there. So is this pauldron supposed to go, you know, somewhere up there? <laughs> Doesn't really work so well on my shoulder here. <laughs> It does make a pretty good hat. If you're enjoying this project, then let me know by clicking that like button. Of course, if you're not already subscribed, do that now, and you might also want to click the bell so that YouTube lets you know whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you're new to the channel, go ahead. Ooh. That's not good. Do the hair. Ah. Oh, I hate it when I talk. Crap. Oh, my hand looks tiny. What the heck? Okay, I'm done.